You are a part of that optimistic crowd about the reopening. You think the rest of the world doesn't quite get the significance, really, and how important this is going to be. What's your first take? Oh, good. First of all, good morning, Steve. Thank you for being with us today at our game conference. The next time we are doing that, that uh, it was absent last year because of the COVID measures. Now we are back with about 400 people at uh, Risk Carlton here. Yes, I am in the camp of very con being constructive about the impact of reopening of China and Hong Kong to the rest of the world. I think one reason why I think the world we may be a bit underestimating the impact is because of the lack of travel. Remember, Hong Kong really only completely revert to openness on the 29th of, uh, of December and China only about a week or so ago. So therefore, how many people really uh, were back to China or for Hong Kong for that matter? And because we have a lot of people living in China, we have a lot of colleagues traveling to China all the time, we can hear from them the direct uh, impact of the reopening and what happened in terms of COVID cycle and the impact on people and people's attitude towards that. And that gave me a lot of confidence. Because it happened so quickly and a lot of the regulatory unwinding and U-turns and then just COVID zero dismantling, it happened really fast. What are your clients coming to you and saying right now where they want to park their money or put their money? Well, first of all, I think they are very encouraged by how short the infection and recovery cycle has been. Some of my, my corporate clients told us that by the end of last year, the whole company, 80, 90 percent of the staff, all got it. And then by the first, so by the time first or second week of, of January, they all mostly recovered and came back to work. And that's important. And encouraged by that kind of observation, they are actually extremely bullish about China's economy and all the beneficiary of, of, of companies, which could be Chinese, could be Hong Kong, could be US, could be Singapore, could be Taiwan which could benefit from that trend. And yes, I think there is a tendency of, look, let's look at what opportunity we have outside China. Because the last three years, they look at onshore China. So that I think from an offshore uh, financial instrument perspective, there's a lot of demand for that. Well, give me a sense, tangible evidence that the reopening is going to benefit your line of business. Can you give me an indication of what kind of asset under management growth you see for 2023? And I'm not necessarily talking about asset uh, increase in valuation through the, the markets or whatever. We're talking about actual new clients, new money being put in? Well, I think AUM is always a function about asset value and also new money coming in. I think my best guesstimate is that I think for the industry overall, I'm going to speak to my peers as well. I think everybody's looking at at least 20% or so. I don't know whether that was a under or overestimate, but the trend is definitely positive. When it comes to actual activities, it's really only about a week or two when China really opened up. I will tell you that both of my colleagues here at Mount Sani and every one of my peers in their banks, I think mean, all of them are planning to send people back to China to meet with the clients, to meet with their contact or, uh, after Chinese New Year. So I think it's a massive explosion of uh, two-way tra transport, tra uh, travel. You look at this conference, for example, I think now we, today we have 60 clients tra traveling from China, from Singapore, Indonesia, back to Hong Kong. And that's only after Hong Kong has been open for like two weeks. It sounds like you're going to need a lot of private bankers. What's hiring plans like? I think we, because we focus on ultra high net worth clients, for us it's always about the quality. I think the reality is that the demand, the supply is very limited. So for both Singapore and Hong Kong, and for that matter, in the onshore locations, if they are willing to come to work, Hong Kong or Singapore to work, we're welcome. So we have a very positive and progressive plan to hire them, but we focus on quality. You have a number you can kind of give me, or kind of roughly. I, you know, three years ago you talked, you gave me numbers between 30 to 35 uh, new, you know, private bankers that you're going to hire in Hong Kong and, and Singapore, which are your two main focus. Can you give an indication of well, just I, how much that demand is going to be? Well, look, I, I, I think if you look at Singapore plus Hong Kong, I would say that when it comes to experience RMs, if I could get 20 by the end of this year, I think I've done an exceptional job. But I'll tell you also that the one of my uh, key underperformance of my job over the last two years feel free is that I always underperform I always I'll never hire enough people so you set the bar low and then you exceed it right I tried that okay. <laughs>